everyone this evening. It is my pleasure to present Michael Weiner, who will be talking to us about the Henry F. Muller Trade Token Hoard. Take it away, Michael. Thank you, Jason. Um, this is a story I should have told 20 years ago, um, but I didn't because I wasn't organized then. I'm not particularly organized now, but I did find a bag of tokens on my desk, and it, I remember now the, the story of how I obtained those tokens. And so um, I got an, this was so long ago, it was when you could actually contact each other on eBay without any repercussions. And I got an email out of the blue because I had been selling some tokens. And he said, would you like to buy some tokens from my great, great uncle store? And, and uh, my first reaction was like, oh, my Lord, um, this sounds great. <laughs> but I sort of tried not to be so excited. I said, oh, yeah, when can we meet? And so we met downtown somewhere. And um, this man explained that his great, great uncle was a, a guy named Henry Muller. And he had this bag of tokens and there were, there were, there were a dozen tokens in it and 11 of them were, were, were different. Or, um, and and um, one of them had uh, Henry Muller's name on it. And, and understandably, he wanted to keep that one as a family heirloom. So, so this is a story of, uh, of this uh, a small collection. So here's a picture of most of the tokens. Um, uh, there, are, um, there were two of this one, the Carol. And then there was another one that I sold that was from Salinas. So I couldn't, I didn't photograph it at the time. So I don't have it. So the first one is sort of interesting um, because it's just these initials. And when you see a token like this, it's like, where could this be from? It could be from anywhere because you don't really know. It's even even if you 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 find a merchant in a town with these initials, that's not really very very definitive. You have to have some kind of supporting information, and and the best would be firsthand information, and that's indeed what this has. You know, the nephew told me that that was his his. Um, his great great uncle's name, and these were the initials. So this is a, a positive, bulletproof attribution that this is a San Francisco token from Henry F. Muller. So that's kind of interesting. And there was another one of those, and the nephew kept one of those as well, understandably. But the other ones he didn't really care about because they were from all over. And I'm going to talk about each one of them separately. Um, this one was the oldest one, I think. It, 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 you see it's worn, and that's because I believe it to be a pre-fire uh, a pre -fire, uh, uh, token. Um, and in fact, the 1903 business directory lists um, this firm, um, which is, a, which is a, a slot machine company or a, a, you know, a nickel in the slot machine kind of company from Detroit called the Kale Brothers. And their office was um, indeed on 42nd Street, and this man, George Letcher, was their... Uh, the manager at the time. Uh, this was a white metal token um, struck by uh, the Irvine Company, so even made here in San Francisco. <clears throat> now, most the reason I think this one was so worn, that one was so worn, is that these tokens I think were collected after the earthquake, because um, many of them are indeed post earthquake uh, tokens, and indeed this one from Fred Chambers. He's listed only one year in the 1909 uh, business directory, and, and he was selling cigars on Kearney Street. Again, made in San Francisco by Patrick and Company. These, and I should mention, all these tokens are 21 millimeter tokens, the size of a nickel. <clears throat> this, this other one is interesting from Herbert's um, in that, um, uh, right after the earthquake in 1906, um, we, we learned that, that uh, Albert H. Herbert was granted a liquor license for his, his saloon on Filmer Street, um, along with 200 other saloon owners. And what, what happened after the earthquake is they suspended uh, liquor sales. Um, by this time, people were pretty thirsty. And so there was, uh, there was, there was a... Uh, 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 push to reopen the saloons, and uh, and that happened in in July of 1906, and Mr. Herbert was undoubtedly pleased, as were his patrons. <clears throat> this next one's interesting. It's it's not downtown. This was the Seal Rock House, 
was at Ocean Beach, uh, just down the hill from the Cliff House. I'll show you a map in a minute. Um, it was uh, much earlier than this token, of course. Um, it was opened in, in the 18, late 1850s and um, became very popular um, throughout the 19th century. And it's important, um, not more, not so much for the token, but, but this is where Jack Johnson, who is the first African-American heavyweight boxing champion, uh, trained. And uh, you can see this postcard. <laughs> this was advertised pretty heavily right on the side of the building. Um, here's a picture of him in his, um, in his uh, um, heavyweight championship fight um, where he, he knocked out Tommy Burns. I believe it's a knockout. Um, and you can see that, that there were, you know, this whole auditorium kind of thing, or I presume that this looks kind of like a restaurant, a bunch of people hanging out down on Ocean Boulevard. And so I was sort of, there's actually a Seal Rock Inn up the hill from the Cliff House right now, but that's not where this was. Um, Seal Rock, of course, is one of the rocks off of the Cliff House. And here's a, here's a map of, from the, um, uh, um, uh, 1910 uh, Sanford, um, uh, Sanborn, Sanborn fire maps, yes. Sanborn fire maps. Um, and you can see here, this is um, Balboa Street right here. So we, this is a, a modern Google map image. Um, and and he, it would have been right around in here, which is now, a, you know, this all is ruined, I guess, um, um, is, uh, is, is sort of a, open space um, the cliff house is up here and so it was down you know on the flat part down the hill from um uh from the cliff house uh the next one um is the one there were two of uh this was um from a man named jeremiah carroll he sold cigars um at this address which is the corner of valencia street and uh and mission so so right down there in the Mission. So you can see these tokens are really from all over town. Uh, one was Fillmore Street, one was Mission, uh, one was way out in the in the avenues or past the avenues. Uh, this one's kind of fun. Um, it was a saloon. Um, saloon tokens are always good to have. Um, it, it was from the Pioneer Saloon. Um, there are lots of Pioneer Saloons in, 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 in the Western United States, according to this time, but this one has the address. So we know it is San Francisco. Um, and it was well outside the area that burned um, in, the, in, the, in the earthquake. And it's kind of interesting because it's in the papers um, before, the, before and after the, uh, the earthquake in that it was, uh, it was uh, robbed. And uh, there was a series of robberies on, uh, on Fillmore Street. And the, 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 the papers say that the thieves broke open the nickel in the slot machines and presumably took the nickels and also made off with a half dozen, dozen bottles of champagne. And uh, apparently there were some recently escaped convicts that were, were, uh, were suspected. Um, they didn't say anything about the tokens, of course, in the, in the papers. Um, this is a picture of what the machines might have been in 1902. This is uh, Charles Fay's Liberty Bell, um, which uh, was one of the very first uh, uh, one-armed bandits. And um, they were they were they were robbed again in 1907. Um, one of the things that is important about these machines is that, and I'll talk about this later. It it really is a nickel in the slot machine. You put a nickel in, but when it paid out, it didn't pay nickels. It paid in the tokens. Now you can put the tokens back in, um, and so. Uh, but that is something I'm going to talk about as we get to the end of the talk. Now this one's a really weird token. It previously unknown, presumably unique. Um, it's, it advertises um, an undertaker, uh, uh, Charles Truman on uh, Mission Street. And uh, the, the papers, uh, through his advertisements in the papers, um, he was at this location from 1902 to 1910. Um, and I think this probably would have burned. I have to check that, I don't, I don't recall. Um, but it raises a lot of questions. Um, there are um, about a hundred undertaker pieces in the online token catalog, tokencatalog.com. But this is the only one that's a slot machine token. So did they have slot machines at the funeral parlor? Beats me, I don't know. Now this one's a Maverick. Um, 
and I've, I've done a lot of research on trying to locate this, and I'm pretty convinced it's not a San Francisco token. There was a Jeremiah Lynch um, in the 197 directory who is a possibility, but um, it, does, it doesn't seem to be anybody, or it doesn't seem to have any brothers in the city, um, much less brothers that were in this business. And so I think, it, I think uh, it's more likely to be um, from Stockton. And uh, as the Lynch brothers are listed in the telephone directory um, uh, as Lynch brothers um, uh, running a saloon. So this would be the first that, that is um, almost certainly not from San Francisco. And then this is another one that uh, is presumably was unknown prior to this, this hoard. Um, the new idea. Now, what would that be? Well, it, it, there's a good, there could be a lot of things. The new idea was also the name of a mine. And so it could have been, you know, just a clever name for a saloon. But I, I have done some, some found some research that new idea and new idea men, referring to the people that were supporters of, of, uh, of prohibition, um, is, was a term that was common. And this anti-saloon league is a, was a real thing. Um, and uh, um, they did open up uh, coffee houses in, um, in various cities in the Western United States and elsewhere, uh, well, actually throughout the United States, but including the West, um, where uh, they didn't serve liquor, but they served coffee. And um, the, they were successful in some towns. They, they, Oakland and San Diego had um, apparently quite had some of these coffee houses. They weren't very popular in San Francisco, and the newspapers um, describe how you know when they would give their their talks about how prohibition would be a good thing, um, um, how unpopular they were, um, and so uh, you know. So I I I don't think this is um, San Francisco. It's possibly Oakland. It possibly San Diego, um, but. It, it, you know, as I mentioned, they're not, they're not, these coffee houses weren't, there was, it wasn't, I don't think there was one in San Francisco, but it, even, even if it was from one of these coffee houses, it's hard to imagine a temperance group supporting cigars, much less gambling, as they, they tended to be um, uh, uh, backed by conservative religious groups. So I think this one remains a mystery. So who is Henry F. Muller? Well, this, if it wasn't for the, the, the middle initial should help. Um, um, and it does a little bit, but there were actually four different Henry Mullers in San Francisco in the liquor business um, uh, through this period. And, um, and, but only, only the one was on Howard Street. And, and at this address, he was uh, only post earthquake 1907 and 1922 after prohibition he sold soft drinks although my guess is you probably could get liquor from them too under the counter um, as was often the case and prior to the earthquake he was a block down on howard street at um at fremont street and and this this token is actually from the ron lurch collection uh jerry had one as well um uh, it's not the one that uh mr muller passed down to his uh his 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 uh, descendant. So um, that, that's it for the tokens. Um, what I wanted to talk about hordes, and uh, Steve certainly knows this, um, um, or those of you, and, and Charlie as well, those who are interested in ancients know that, that scholars use um, hordes of ancient coins to, um, to, to learn something about the culture of the time, and especially to establish relationships of, of trade and commerce, and, uh, and and possibly other kinds of connections between communities. And I'm going to maintain that this hoard, even though it's small, is also revealing. Oh, what's this? Oh, well, you know, the very first article I ever wrote for PCNS was about what I was collecting at the time I joined PCNS were video game tokens, and. Um, that's kind of how I got into tokens. I, I, I like to go to the video arcades and play the games. And I noticed at one point that they all had different kinds of tokens and that sort of started the whole thing. And I ended up writing this, an article for PCNS and it ended up in, 
in the numismatist. Well, I'm going to tell a story about arcade tokens and 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 I actually have proof that they circulated. Because they used to go when you know this was also when I first started working and I and I traveled a lot and when I'd go into a new town I I'd, I'd go through the yellow pages find out where the arcade go down were and I'd go down there and I'd buy some tokens. And one time I was in uh, this happened twice the, the 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 big time the payoff time was in uh, Campbell California and and I found the arcade in this town and uh, and I went there and they were using quarters. And I asked the guy who, who was running it, who was a young fellow, um, um, just a few years younger than me at the time, um, you know, did, you, you, you don't use tokens. He goes, oh, well, I used to, but the, um, I found that most of the tokens I didn't sell, they were from all over the place. And I said, oh, do you still have them? He goes, yeah, I do. And he, and he told me in the back and he had buckets of these tokens and, um, you know, hundreds of pounds of them. And I said, you know, would you mind if I go through? I'll buy some from you. And so, um, so I did, and I bought loads of them at a quarter apiece. And um, you know, that augmented my collection. And then I bought duplicates and triplicates and quintuplets because I had people that I could trade from. And these tokens were all from all over the country. A lot of you know, all over California, of course, but also as far as Florida and New Jersey, um, where there actually are a lot of arcades at that time. And there really are only two arcade token sizes, 23 millimeters and 25 millimeters. And so naturally, you know, if you had them in your pocket from some other arcade, if they fit in the machine, the kids are going to play them. So I think that's what happened with these tokens is that, you know, like I mentioned, that slot machine that Charles Fay had, you could put nickels in, but you could also put tokens. And so if you had tokens that you had won, won down in the mission and you just happen to be that night in a saloon in 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 the western edition you're going to play them and so i think that that this hoard is evidence that that people use these nickel in the slot tokens the same way that the kids were using the arcade tokens back in the 80s and 90s and indeed this the tokens of this hoard span a range of neighborhoods from downtown to to uh, where where Henry was in, in South of Market, to deeper in the Mission, the Western Edition, and um, and all the way uh, to the coast, and probably Stockton, and maybe farther away from that new idea token. So we we'll never know the reason why Mr. Mueller decided to to collect these tokens. It's sort of interesting that. You know, with only one exception, they were all just one of a kind. So, you know, sort of a collection of his. Um, the 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 um, so I, I I believe that they were probably in his machines. You know, that's where he, when he when he opened them up to take to refill the the machines with with the with um, with with tokens and to take out the nickels. He 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 extracted these. Um, the hoard definitely, if nothing else, tells us that HFM token is is uh, is a san francisco token um and and this is really different than other hordes um of token hordes the only two i'm really um aware of were um one was a traveling salesman uh ron lurch purchased it and it was a box where the traveling salesman had collected tokens from all over his travels and had mounted them on the box and so, you know, it was a record of where he had gone, but it wasn't really uh, telling us anything about tokens leaving the leaving the um, their premises. And then there was a, the same kind of thing with a with a, a saddle that um, that had a lot of a lot of different tokens mounted on it as a decorative thing. These showed up at West shows in the in the past. So I think this hoard is very different than those two, and and and. I'm concluding that that it's evidence that these these tokens circulated between machines because they could. So that's it, and uh, I'd like to hear what anybody has to say um, about this. Uh, this is this this is the subject of my uh, uh, paper contributed to PCNS for this year. Well, thank Thanks, you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. So does anyone have any questions for Michael about his story? Yeah, I do. This is Herb. 
Michael, did the um, did the nephew have any idea about why his uncle had the bag of tokens? It was a long time ago, but I, I, I'm certainly asked him that, and, and I don't believe he knew. Um, I'm not sure that the I'm pretty sure that the 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 great great uncle had passed away. Although it was a long time ago, I don't recall that that he actually even knew um, his uncle because uh, it was too many generations. Because you know he was he was about my age, and um, Mr. Muller was in um, business in the you know up until about 1920. I think I have the Herbert's token, just because that's my name. Hmm. Well, yeah, you should. <laughs> I have a lot of tokens that have HM. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ken sure. Barr uh, was the source for a lot of those. Your middle initial is an F, is it? Nope, no middle initial at all. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, well, the the Herbert's one is pretty interesting because it it you know is mentioned in this uh, headline about the saloons reopening. Yeah, Michael, I have a question. Can you explain the old slot machines where they would either take a nickel or you could put the tokens in? I'm not sure. Well, the, the, the token is the same size as a nickel. So either and, one is acceptable. So it would take either one, yeah, okay. yeah. But it would only pay out in tokens. Oh, and oh, originally okay. they paid out in nickels. But, um, you know, the and, and you have to remember that Charles Fay invented the... the um, the one-armed bandit in San Francisco in the 1890s, and so, um, you know, this is this is the town where that kind of gambling really took off. And you know, around the turn of the century, up until you know, well, prohibition, every every bar, every cigar stand had at least one of these machines on the countertop, and it made them a lot of money. But the, um, you know, especially like the Barbary Coast being so wild and woolly. Uh, the um, the the how do I put this the 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 uh, genteel ladies of who were the wives of the city politicians didn't like all this gambling and so there were a series of laws passed um, that uh, that at first prohibited paying out in 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 um, in, in um, uh, cash alone. And so the earliest tokens will just have a number on the back, you know, five or 10 or something. Um, and uh, the laws were changed later and they, they, they then said good for something in trade or good for something in merchandise. And, um, and uh, um, later on, you know, that even was, was, was unacceptable. And so the very light, sort of the la last tokens of that sort of era will say good for a pack of cigarettes or good for a pack of gum even. Hey, could I ask a question that piggybacks on Charlie's question? Yeah. Um, I assume that those machines were money makers for the saloon keepers or wherever they were because uh, people are putting nickels in just to be entertained, which doesn't cost anything once you've paid off the machine. But then how much did the tokens cost compared to the nickel that they were selling it do they cost much less than a nickel to oh yeah i'm sure they did because it cost less than a nickel to make a nickel at the time um and the the, the big token manufacturers in san francisco were were uh uh lh uh, moisey for these and then patrick company and irvine which i think there was there were all three of those uh die sinkers in in this collection um you know so it's not unlike uh well it, it it it's not unlike Vegas today. I mean, you know, the slot machines are really popular. They're kind of, you know, you know, you, you go watch you watch people um, play them. It's it's rather depressing actually to, to me. But um, uh, I wrote actually more about the slot machines uh, some uh, years ago when I talked about Moisey's Gunst. Um, he was the um, a police. Um, a commissioner who had made his fortune in, in cigars and he was invested in a different uh, slot machine um, uh, company and um, called Reliance and during his tenure um, 
bars that did not have the Reliance slot machine, but had some other company would often get raided. And the ones that had his were, were, were safe, which was a, a good way to sell slot machines. Yeah. And Michael, what maybe you mentioned this, but what are the tokens made of? Uh, most of them are brass. Um, yeah. Some of them are what we call white metal, which is some, you know, alloy that that has, uh, you know, a, probably some nickel in it, I suppose. Um, um, that uh, the, even they they're the, they're the size of a, of, a, of a five cent nickel, but they they may be a little bit different in weight. But apparently, that didn't matter. Michael, have there been any studies on how much? Uh, income the machines generated? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I do know that um, uh, that um, sometimes the, the slot machines would pay off in tickets good for cigars. And, and uh, um, Moisey Gunst had these and, um, and somebody started counterfeiting them and um, so then he started making them um, in, uh, in sealed in plastic, and so there's there's some of those. Um, there also was um, some scandals where people would, um, you know, let's say you won a bunch of these tickets or maybe even tokens. I don't really know. It's hard to tell from the, the papers, but there were people who would buy them um, up at a discount from you, and. Um, uh, uh, that was um, that was illegal because then you were then you were gambling, you know, and get and make and profiting from your getting getting cash instead of merchandise for your for your gambling, um, and so um, so that that was uh, th that was also a, a, a an issue. And Jerry used to say that you know if you knew the bartender, you could turn these back into cash. And there does seem to be some evidence where where this um, where where the payoffs to the police weren't made and that they came in and they busted them for it because it was really crooked i mean they you know they they were the the they were they were constantly um, bribing people to get away with with uh, illicit gambling mm -hmm. great any other question oh i see mark um, I just wanted to make note, and I'll have to find it. I have one of the new idea tokens somewhere. It's probably in a box of I give up because there's so little information on it. But uh, the two by two might have some information on it, so I'll dig that up and because uh, it's not listed anywhere. So if you have any new ideas about the new idea, I'd be happy. <laughs> um, but I'm going to have to look for this token. I don't. I give up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that's the name of a bar or a saloon, the new idea. Well, I think that, that it's either... Or I give up. Uh, yeah, right. I think it's either the name of a bar, which which it, it's almost impossible to search for because all sorts of people had new ideas. Or, you know, this real long shot, I think, of, of the coffee house. I mean, it does the coffee house, the more I think about it, the less sense it makes because, you know, you know, are you going to really smoke cigars and drink coffee? <laughs> or Drinking, would they have a slot machine? It, yeah. So, well, it, it, but you know, maybe it was the first gay bar in San Francisco. That would have been a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe the token was for, not for a cigar, but for another cup of coffee. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. That would be an idea also. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any final Michael, questions? So Michael, were you able to put any time frame on the new idea token? No, no, other than, you know, the, the size and fabric puts it between 1900 and 1915, maybe. Yeah. Um, the other tokens. Yeah, yeah. Because around that same time frame, I, research I've seen on a couple of metals I had been pursuing had definite sort of this new theme, new idea, sort of political movements, sort of all kind of wrapped into one. And they all seem to originate from San Francisco. So there seemed to be something at that time, 1890s to 1920s, where a lot of these types of movements were getting kicked off in San Francisco. Yeah, to confuse matters, or 
more, there was a, um, a Republican Party faction that called themselves the New Idea, although that's a little earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, you know, a difficult thing to search for, you know, through the newspapers mm -hmm. um, in that you just come up with thousands and thousands of of, of quotes ideas. where, yeah, I have a new idea. <laughs> you know, why don't we make gambling illegal or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a new idea. Okay. Um, thank so you. thank you, Michael. You can stop. Thanks,